Yes, MIT, uh, MIT Massachusetts Institute of Technology, um, MIT announced that it would no longer require prospective faculty members to submit diversity statements. So you remember, we talked about this uh, a few months ago, maybe a year ago, maybe two years ago, I can't remember, that faculty all over the United States, not just at MIT, but to get a faculty job, you basically had to write this brief memo, basically swearing alliance to some you know, diversity, inclusion, equity uh, uh, standard. That is, hiring at our top universities, the best universities sometimes in the world, was not any more based on ability a publication, uh, uh, scientific qualifications, but now it was all of that plus you had to write a, a DEI statement. You had to commit, you had to swear that you were, you know, you were okay with this DEI agenda. It, 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 it you know, real horror, really horrific, really uh, authoritarian and, uh, uh, you, you, of course, this is a way to force people. This is a way to impose on people, um, impose on people uh, a dogma, a dogma the universities accepted and that basically everybody went along with. And if you stood up against and you weren't tenure, you found it very, very difficult to get a job. Uh, you know, there were some exceptions, like University of Chicago, uh, which is an exception on a lot of these things and good for them. Anyway, MIT announced that it no longer required prospective faculty to submit such proposals, and this is great. It's scrapped. Um, it, it, just, it just shows how nutty things got, how insane the social justice movement became and managed to win. But it is without any question, in retreat, in retreat. And um, suffering, you know, suffering real setbacks. MIT is, was one of the more woke schools, in spite of its focus on engineering and uh, science, uh, the humanities at MIT were particularly bad. MIT, of course, is one of the places where the president of the university couldn't condemn calls, uh, you know, calls for violence uh, against Jews. And yet she's the only one who kept her job. Uh, you know, the Harvard president and the Penn president all uh, resigned. She kept her job suddenly. And maybe part of the deal of her keeping her job was taking actions to mitigate some of the crazy, nutty, so-called social justice uh, stuff that, uh, that uh, MIT had embraced. So DEI statements, DEI uh, uh, diversity statements no longer needed at MIT. You can now apply for a job uh, freely without it. Now, this is part of, a, of, of what is being observed um, as a pattern, and that is a pattern of a DEI retreat across the corporate landscape uh, and even, as you see with MIT, uh, within the university system. So, for example, um, I'll give you one example. Uh, last year, Eli Lilly a a annual shareholders letter referred to DEI or diversity, equity, inclusion in words, either one, 48 times. Shareholder letter, 48 times. This year, there's no DEI. There's no diversity, equity, and inclusion in the letter. Uh, Starbucks got shareholder approval to replace representation goals with talent performance and executive bonus incentives. What the hell? That's insane. I mean, managers at Starbucks are now going to be evaluated and provided bonuses based on performance and talent, not based on representation goals. At Coors, um, people and plant metrics have displayed environmental, social, and governance ESG goals, and the acronym DEI has completely disappeared. Maybe they learned from the Bud White fiasco. So uh, American business is basically backing off. A lot of this has to do with the Supreme Court ruling uh, in the Harvard case saying that discriminating against a group, i.e. Asians, uh, i.e. Asians in, um, uh, 
<laughs> uh, Asians at Harvard, so in the, uh, in the Supreme Court case against Harvard, where they struck down affirmative action in colleges and universities, uh, since then, uh, firms have withdrawn from DEI. And at the University of Texas, they fired the entire DEI uh, program. And again, you could say that's a red state, but they had DEI for a long time. But since this ruling, they have fired the whole DEI administration. Uh, corporations have moved away from it. Some of it, some of it is just a change in language. Um, some of it is just a change in language, uh, but some of it is real. Some of it is actually real. Change of the way corporations evaluate people, less about DEI, more about performance, more about uh, you know actual, uh, actual, uh, actual performance. Uh, I'll give you one more example. Um, demand for programs such as, quote, unconscious bias training. You remember unconscious bias, bi uh, bias training, which was big with BLM and, and exploded. Whoever was offering unconscious bias training made a boatload of money uh, right after BLM. That just exploded. It's been super high. Anyway, demand for programs such as unconscious bias training, high a few years ago, has dried up. Dried up. Um, now there's a spike in, 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 in training around, I don't know, employee resource groups and helping out, uh, you know, uh, helping out people, groups of caregivers, veterans, first generation Americans, talking about you know, real challenges and real struggles that people actually have instead of delving into unconscious bias, which was, you know, which was always questionable, although it probably exists, unconscious bias probably exists, but these programs were not targeted at actually eradicating it. They were targeted around you feeling guilty about it and acknowledging you have it and acknowledging you can't get rid of it, which is basically... Uh, you know what they, you know what they held and what they believed. 